Here in the U.S. into the very personal issue of abortion, the case making national headlines, the young pregnant wife, her health in danger, and the Texas state lawmakers and that state's Supreme Court making the decision for her, blocking her abortion in Texas. Now, presidential candidates are being asked about this. Tonight, Diane Sawyer and Rachel Scott with women who were pregnant and faced health risks, too, and told they could not have an abortion as well. So who should decide this? Here's Rachel Scott. Tonight, the young pregnant wife from Texas. Her doctors say her health was in danger, that her baby had little chance of survival, but she was blocked by the Texas Supreme Court from getting an abortion. This deeply personal struggle now forcing candidates for president to address how they feel about Kate Cox's ordeal. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. It seems to me this should have been a pretty easy decision and the Texas Supreme Court got it wrong. Former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley suggesting a female president might be better at this, saying, I don't think the fellas have known how to talk about it. Telling our own John Carl today, it's up to Texas to change the law. Now it's up to the legislature in Texas to say, how do we make sure there are no more Kates that go through that? Diane Sawyer and I sat down with 18 women from 10 different states who face life-threatening emergencies and severe complications with non-viable pregnancies, but were denied access to abortions. Is this a debate over abortion or is it a debate over health care? Health care. It's a debate healthcare. over human rights. We also spoke with doctors like Amelia Huntsberger in Idaho, who told Diane the law's exception to save the life of the mother is vague and dangerous. Is 25% chance of death, is that, is that enough? Does she have to have a 75% chance of death? Who gets to decide? Do you want the government making your medical decisions? These are some of the state politicians around the country who supported the abortion restrictions currently in place. There are over 2,000 of them. They are overwhelmingly male. In Idaho, abortion is banned outright, except in cases of rape and incest, and to save the life of the mother. Yes or no, the health of the woman's irrelevant, yes or no? I would say it weighs less, yes, than um, the life of the child. For Dr. Huntsberger, it's all too much. It feels like state-sanctioned suffering. This summer, Dr. Huntsberger and her husband, who was also a doctor, decided they were no longer able to take care of their patients under these conditions, and they moved out of Idaho. I had the privilege of serving a community that I love for more than 10 years. It's been really hard, and I had, don't have any regrets about the decision that we've made. Doctors we spoke to told us that the more state lawmakers in the courts make decisions about their patients' health, the harder it is to care for them. In fact, in states with complete abortion bans, there has been a significant drop-off in OBGYN doctors who want to practice there, David. This has started a real conversation all over again. Rachel Scott with us tonight, and we should point out that Rachel is joining Diane Sawyer for this in-depth report, which so many women are now facing. The report on Impact by Nightline called On the Brink. Diane and Rachel uncovering the harrowing stories of pregnant women who have medical emergencies in states with laws restricting abortions and the doctors caught in the middle. It's streaming right now on Hulu. Rachel, thank you again tonight. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.